If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode, bring yeah. it in hot of Mind Pump. We so, got some uh, estrogen for you. Yeah, we interviewed. So <laughs> Adam welcome. coached a uh, young lady, uh, Melissa, for her first contest. And uh, we didn't talk too much about it. We just kind of followed it along. Uh, first contest ever, and she killed it, of course. Uh, she <laughs> has... First, the, first, and she's second. She's got Adam in her corner. She's got the jeans, and she's got uh, Adam coaching her. Adam took her through, and we talk about in this episode how what her strategy was like with her nutrition, with her cardio or lack of, um, how her metabolism didn't get damaged. She actually ate she was up six, at 1,600 was her lowest, 1,600 right? calories yeah. was the lowest that she ate, and she's a tiny girl. Unheard so of. pretty awesome. But we also talk about her training, and for the most part, she followed the program that we have that's designed for specifically for advanced trainees and for competitors, MAPS Aesthetic. That's the program that she followed. So here's what we're going to do. After we finished with the episode, we decided we wanted to do something kind of cool for our audience. We have never put MAPS Aesthetic on a massive sale. So we're going to do a flash sale uh, with MAPS Aesthetic. You can actually get it for half off. However, we're going to give you one hoop to jump through. You got to go on Instagram and go to Melissa's Instagram page. Her page is Melly Wolf with two F. So it's M E L I. W-O-L-F-F on Instagram. Go there. In her bio is going to be a coupon code. That code is going to give you 50% off. We're only running that for what? 48 hours? 48 hours when this airs. So this episode is going to drop. uh, It should be Sunday when you're listening to this. Tuesday is the final day for this. Then the coupon code is going to be gone. So if you go to her page on Instagram, again, it's Melly Wolf, M-E-L-I-W-O-L-F-F. In her bio, you're going to find a coupon code. It's going to give you half off of MAPS Aesthetic. And if you have any questions about the program, you can find out more at mindpumpmedia.com. So without any further ado, here we are talking to Melissa Wolf. We are hot. Smoking, smoldering hot. What's the, uh, what's the name of the competition you just crushed everyone in, Melissa? Yeah. You didn't quite crush everyone. Well, uh, <clears throat> the one you, you won. It was the trophy Central champion. Californian We are sitting with Miss Central California <laughs> Bikini <laughs> of the world champion. And the universe. Melissa Wolf. Oh, my Thank God. You. Good Thank job you on, your, on your victory. Thank you. That was very, very good. And you did it all naturally, too, which is good. I yeah. really did. That's I very, really very good. Cool. What was your experience like uh, competing? Overall? That's a vague ass question. That yeah, is it is. Super vague Let's question. Start with, uh, like, was it Melissa, generic? Melissa, tell us, what do you what do you think about life? Yeah. <laughs> Why are we here? What's up? What do we do? Where do we go when we die? Were you nerv- yeah. Were you like, nervous getting up there yeah. and doing all this, the poses oh and stuff? Oh my God, it was so fucking nerve wracking. Am I was it, to say that? Before, was it really? Of course you can say this. is mind pump. <laughs> it, before you even go there, let's talk. You broke your, your fucking Why cherry. don't you share with the audience? Because uh, I think a lot of people don't know that you weren't somebody who is always wanted to compete in bikini so right. what even led you to even think about that why why <clears throat> did you not do it in the past what made you decide to do it now mm-hmm. um okay so starting out with why i didn't ever want to do it in the past was i think because what i saw of what it meant to compete was people trying to prove something to themselves that wasn't even there to prove in the first place so it was like people pushing their bodies to get to this point in an expedited period of time to push their bodies to a point that their body shouldn't even be in in the first place did you have friends that did it before i did have friends that did, did, it, yeah. did they have, I um, do have friends. did they do did they get like metabolic damage and stuff afterwards or i mean from my perspective, yes, mm. I'm not somebody who can diagnose yeah, cl- whether clinically or not that him. happened. But I we do it all the time. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I see Randomly people who have competed that I know. I have a close friend that struggles a lot with um, weight gain after shows, and that's been something. That was probably her experience was the biggest deterrence for me because. I would see her jump into a show, grind, 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 look really great on stage, and then come out of it so hard and so fast and gain so much weight and just have and get so depressed and upset and down on herself and unhappy. And then she would resort to 
prepping again because mm-hmm. that's what she felt. The only way she felt that she could look the way that she wanted to look. What made you finally change your mind to compete? <clears throat> well, I um, a few there are a few factors. I was really into well I got even more I got more and more into the gym more and more into lifting I saw changes in my body that kind of started to resemble what a competitor might look like in an off season and I got comments all the time like you look like you compete do you compete like you should compete and I would brush it off a lot often all the time actually and um <clears throat> then eventually I started I actually started listening to Mind Pump and I started hearing Adam talking about um, competing and you guys talked a lot about competing and I first identified with how you guys spoke about how bad it is. Mm. Um, And then Adam would mention every now and again that, you know, there's a better way. There's there's a better way. People aren't doing it right. There's got to be a better way. And I thought to myself, well, if there's a better way maybe I should try doing that. And I reached out to Adam and what was that like conversation like Adam? Would, well, the very, <clears throat> the very first time that like, did you try to talk her out of it or were you like, Let's no, because when <laughs> the way we, we met first, right. So the kind of the missing piece to that story she just told was she, uh, I know that she started listening to mind pump. I think it was the Lane Norton episode is what you told me was the first one you listened uh-huh, to. Right. Yeah. And, uh, I think was it, it was your boyfriend that turned you on to la- yeah. the episode first. <clears throat> right. So, yeah. And it was more they were like listening to listen to Lane Norton because I think he's a fan of Lane Norton. Yeah, so I'd never heard I'd never heard of who I didn't I didn't know who Lane Norton was, and um, my boyfriend did, and he knew that Lane was really controversial and wanted to see what my opinion was about him. So kind of sent me he sent me an episode that I he thought that I could listen to that wasn't a super aggressive mm. Lane Norton episode. So he sent me your guys' episode. And I listened to it, and I got back to him. He, he said, listen to this, give me your feedback. And I got back to him. I was like, I don't know about Lane Norton, but I really liked the guys who interviewed him. Mm. And I started listening. <laughs> That's what we do to everybody. <laughs> She's smart. <laughs> and I started listening to you guys. And um, and then you, uh, you and started following the Mind Pump Media I page. I started right? following the Mind Pump Media page, and Taylor, who manages that page, reached out to me and asked if I would consider coming in to do – videos for I don't know whatever happened what yeah happened it was videos and a photo shoot because at the time we we're getting ready to do some YouTube stuff so right. he had came I remember when he had <clears throat> showed me your profile I'd never met you before and you know we've brought Taylor on board and Taylor is you know kind of the marketing side of the business and social media back end stuff so he's working a lot with the YouTube and the Instagram <clears throat> and and working with our kind of rebranding that we're going through and one of the things that I think everybody knows that we're kind of missing this uh, female presence, right? I know we, all of us guys, we're the three of us are in touch with our feminine side, but we're we're missing a little Not bit. Not really, we're, especially just <laughs> we're, we're missing that estrogen, and it you know it was really tough because we weren't just going to attach anybody to us, and so Taylor was kind of on the hunt mm-hmm. for a girl who he thought fit our brand and had a good message and was smart and had a very natural real look. We didn't want somebody who was super shredded and all all kinds of shit to look that way. And like he was looking for someone. And when he showed me your profile, you know, I, at first glance I said, yeah, I like it. You know, have her come in. I trust you if you've been paying attention to it. Uh, and that's where we first met and you and I shot the, yeah. And we all mm-hmm. noticed the mechanics when you did a barbell squat and I was My like, squat. Oh, f- finally, you know, <laughs> somebody that has like really good mechanics, we can work with this, you know, cause <laughs> we're trying to get all these like exercise photos accomplished and all this kind of stuff. So that was important. So at this time, I think you are really just getting to know us and really starting to start, go through the mind pump episodes. Yeah. Right. I remember after I came in, you guys mentioned my squat on an episode and I listened to you. Like, oh my like, God, yeah, that's right. I do have my squat. That's right. <laughs> yeah. right. So I think uh, it wasn't until later uh, that she had thought about doing the competing and that's where mm-hmm. she, and from, like she said, the episodes that she'd heard us talk about and then she had mentioned it to me and I thought it was great because I thought I already, we knew the whole purpose why we thought she was a match. We already thought she had the look and uh, we could use for photos and videos and marketing purposes and I thought, well, this will be cool. She's got, she's a smart girl. She's got the look already. And then she wants to compete. Yeah. So I was actually totally pro her doing it because I knew who she was though too. So I, I mean, 
you got to know that she's going through DPT school right now. I so was going to say, yeah, why don't you like mention what you're doing uh, these days and like what your background is? A little oh bit. God, okay. Well, my background. This is the past two weeks I've been in. I started my uh, doctorate graduate program at Samuel Merritt University, and oh my God, it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I have no time. I live in cadavers and books and it's really freaking hard and mm. I used to spend a lot of time here with you guys and now in the past couple of weeks I haven't at all because I can barely yeah. find time You're to shower. You're all up in organs and yeah, cadaver, yeah. cadaver parts. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's the only reason why um, I would I didn't. normally A normal person that would ask me I'm like you Sal, I would probably try and talk them out of it because I knew her level of education. And then I also knew her view of competing in bodybuilding and all that stuff before. Cause when we first met, we kind of briefly talked about it and she told me she had friends that competed and she was totally turned off by the industry originally. And for those reasons. So I think she had the right head on her shoulders to be somebody. And then plus I knew I would be guiding it. So of course, as I'm guiding her through it, I'm we're, there's lots of community. I'm talking to her daily. So there's lots of communication of this is why we do this. And of course she challenges and asks everything that I do, you know, it's like, why do we do that? You know, mm -hmm. well, this is why we're doing that. Or this is the theory why we're doing this. Like, so, you know, a lot of the times, uh, you know, she's asking all the right questions and I think her relationship with food, I mean, shit, we, uh, what was the lowest calorie I think you ever, <clears throat> we ever took you down to, um, for an extended period of time, 1600 was the lowest that I ever did. That, which is, that's high, that's, yeah. that's high calorie for someone prepping, for a show, for a girl, Very high especially calorie. for someone your size, you're tiny. I'm like, tiny. Yeah, you're not. You're not a super tall girl. Mm -mm. Most girls your size walk into a competition eating around a thousand calories, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes less. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's a hundred. You yeah. know, she's 115 pounds, so 1600 mm -hmm. calories. And we at one point, and that's towards the that's towards competition. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. What do we What do we peak up before we before we actually started cutting? What did you peak at? What was the highest? I was at 2600. So, which is a man, is the, that's wow. man which is, calories. Which is man food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's half as much yeah. as Justin eats. Yeah. So you, uh, so you, uh, you guys ramped up calories yeah. going in. So when you first started your prep, it wasn't, let's start cutting. It was move calories up. Mm -hmm. Now, when Adam is telling you, um, listen, we're going to, I'm going to have you eat more calories. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking, hmm. okay, he's this crazy. This guy's an idiot. Yeah. He's skeptical. <laughs> yeah. Or, or were you like, okay, I'm going to trust him because he has yeah. a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a total reason to trust him. Well, I mean, you know, you have a little bit You're of a right. No, this I is a great a question. Podcast. I'm actually, I've never asked her this. It'd be interesting to hear. Yeah, her. what were you thinking when he's like, no, we're going to increase your calories? Were you thinking like, what the fuck? Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I, I know enough about, um, you know, the way your metabolism works to know that you can boost it and make it more efficient and I knew that that was the goal and it made sense to me to incrementally boost those calories so that I was then boosting my metabolism. And how many weeks out did you guys start? Like what was the, how many weeks total was this whole prep period? Do you, remember, you, do you remember when we started? What week it was? Uh, <laughs> we started in, I think it was July with the, with the, boosting of yeah, the metabolism. Yeah. And then I think that that lasted for maybe a month. Which we should, I think you should talk about that too, because I didn't want to pick a show until I felt our metabolism was in the Let's right Let's talk place. about that right. because most people <laughs> pick a show and then start. And then it's the right. countdown, yes. Yeah. But Cutting. the way you did it, Adam, which I think is the best way to do it, is to start getting ready, see how your body responds, and then start to say, okay, I think... I can do a show around this period, then start looking. Well, I, I mean, Melissa can share this. So she she asked me like, when are we going to do a show? Like right out the when should we look at the dates? Oh, so you took a little while to even pick. Yeah. So right out the gates, she wanted to know like time frame and shows, and I was I couldn't give her the answer. I said, ah, uh, I don't know yet. And I said, what we and I explained too that I think this is also the big mistake that most of these girls do before they get ready for a show is they base it off of, <clears throat> you know, hey, in, in November, whatever, I want to get in great shape. Let's do a show just to do a show. Mm. Like I was more like, let's figure out where your metabol metabolism is right now and where you're at, like as far as your overall movement and let's figure you out. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we can kind of map out what's a realistic time frame. Yeah, I did have kind of a map of what, 
the kind of time frame I, I wanted and needed because I was starting school in, in September. And I knew that I wanted to do a show before then because I didn't know what school was going to be like. So I told him that and he knew that. But that was three and a half months out when we first That's started. right. And I do remember that uh, I remember actually wanting to go longer. Mm -hmm. And you were like, oh, can we get it before yeah. the school? And I was like, OK, we're not pushing it that bad. And she was in a very healthy situation to do it. But even in a perfect world, I think I remember I wanted even more time. I mm -hmm. wanted a couple more weeks to feel confident of where. And, and to be honest with you, uh, looking how she presented herself on stage, hands down, I think we are first place. I think that she presented uh, probably one to two pounds stage weight away from a pro physique on that stage. Our, if our conditioning was one to two more weeks, I think we have a pro level physique so for I'm sure. Posing is shit. Yeah, it's part of the game. You know that. I told you that from the very beginning. Uh, that's probably nerves. I would say it a lot totally of it's nerves. Is. Yeah, so, tell, tell. <laughs> so starting off with the boost in calories, you're doing your training. How are you feeling? With the more calories, what are you noticing at this point? Do you remember? Are you feeling stronger? Yeah. So at first, I was feeling full all the time. I was shoveling food. I mean, I don't know if people. I I feel like whenever I tell people that I was eating twenty six hundred calories, they don't. They're like, oh, okay, yeah. But I'm like, no, no, no. That means <laughs> I was eating this, 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 yeah. this, 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 and this, and also this, mm -hmm. and that too, and then more. It was like. I was eating so much food and I was stuffed all the time, but I was super, super strong. I felt like I was throwing weights around the gym. That's what I would say to Adam every day. I'd be like, I threw everything around the gym all day today. Um, <laughs> and, but then as, and I started to notice too, as my body would kind of acclimate, I would, I would still be hungry after 2,600 calories. I, I was like, oh yeah, 2,600 and I'm like still eat. And then, Are you gaining any body fat at this point? Yeah, so okay. I did gain a little bit of weight for sure. I gained maybe like three or four pounds. Wow, that's nothing at all. Um, yeah, so it was not. The, I mean, and 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 I, a lot of that was probably muscle because I was lifting. Like now, crazy. now at this point, uh, I'm I'm assuming you you changed your training, or was it, how different was your training? under because you guys used uh maps aesthetic that was the mm -hmm. we started on maps yeah. aesthetic and then towards the end of the sh towards the very end of the show i broke down a few like muscle groups that i wanted her just touching from there on out and mm -hmm. said okay this is all because all the work had been done yeah that's what <clears throat> and now were you what was your training like before doing maps aesthetic was it similar or was it a very different change uh before i was doing more of a two body parts a day kind of a thing so like a split yeah more split. of a split mm -hmm. did you notice a big change when you changed over to like you know map style training did you notice any differences in things like strength and the way your body looked sure yeah and the way that my body looked i mean my shoulders are so adam had me focus on shoulders and hamstrings um because those i guess are two of the big judging points for bikini competitions and um I worked on those as my what, focus focus days focus sessions. Uh -huh. and my shoulders. I mean, they're my rear delts and my delts overall are bigger, much. And my hamstring, I've never seen, I never saw my hamstring tie-ins until this prep. <laughs> and they're there. It's pretty cool. I sprouted wings. That's awesome. <laughs> part of, part of the, uh, what was really important. And we kind of touched this on the show when we actually talked about metabolic damage, even though this has nothing to do with metabolic damage. But what I knew when I, when I boosted her calories that high, I also knew how she was training before, mm -hmm. and I knew MAPS aesthetic would create a new adapt new adaptation. So it would just go to muscle? Yeah, it would go to muscle. Mm -hmm. It's like her body is not used to this, regardless mm -hmm. if it's the best program for her or the best gain she'll ever see in her life. It didn't even matter to me. I knew that it was different enough from what she was currently doing that it was perfect, for, especially since fa in phase one. The way we are in mm -hmm. phase one, we're lower reps and heavy weight, just like we talked about pulling somebody out of the same theory of pulling somebody out, out of metabolic damage is the same theory I'm going to apply 
to trying to speed someone's metabolism up. That's it's trying the same to, thing. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. the same same thing, right? So I'm, you know, we're not doing cardio at all. So that's something too. She was prescribed mm-hmm. out the gates, no cardio. So mm-hmm. zero cardio and let's lift some heavy ass weight. And we, you know, uh, we got a chance to actually work at, tr- I got a chance to train her, uh, you know, quite a few times. And when I would train her, I would sh- kind of show her like, this is the intensity or this is how he- I would rather you go heavier right now on these things than, you know, lighter and get more repetitions because it's important to me that we're, we are throwing something at your body. It is just not used to while we're also increasing these calories. So I know that even if we do put a little bit of fat on, we're going to, most of that's going to get allocated over to building muscle. So that was the strategy when we, when we first start off. And it's no different than how I would approach somebody who I'm trying to speed their metabolism up. That's uh, got metabolic damage. Now during this whole period of time, you know, weeks or whatever, you know, calories are going up. Then you start to drop them. You're training a particular way. You're throwing cardio towards the end. How was that right before contest period? Because I hear everybody who competes talks about that, those weeks leading up to a contest, Mm -hmm as being hell, as mm-hmm. hating life, everything sucks, I feel like shit. Um, what, what was that like for you leading up to the contest? Was it what you had expected? Was it easier or harder than uh, you had expected? I, it was not what I expected and everything I expected all at the same time because I definitely, I mean, I'd be lying if I said that it was easy. I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't super grumpy and that I didn't snap at my boyfriend maybe five or six or seven plus times. (laughs) But um, it was, it wasn't as, it wasn't bad for an extended period of time is what I found is I had bad days and I had good days, but I didn't ever really feel like there was a stretch where I was just like, I cannot do this. And the closer I got to my show, which, which was counterintuitive to me, what I felt better. And peak week, I felt great. And I didn't, I mean, not, I didn't feel strong. I didn't, and I wasn't even working out towards the end. So you were grumpy, not, not up to the contest, like in in the middle? Well, think about this, right? So there is going to come a time, right? And I remember talking to her and like setting her, setting the table for on this, like, it will get hard Mm -hmm. and there will come a time where you're hungry. Like that's part of like getting shredded and cutting, right? At one point when you're getting lean, uh, you will face feeling hunger because if your metabolism is roaring yeah. and going and you're restricting it, you're eating all that food right, prior to that. Right. And it's a pretty stark contrast. Yeah, yeah. it's it's inevitable. It's going to come. But the goal was even when you're hungry like that and that feeling, you'll still be actually eating a good amount of calories that your body is being well nourished. Right. So it's not like you're doing damage or hurting your body as much as it's just having the discipline to refrain from eating more calories right. and i think that's what you mean by like it was everything you thought and more and you know and what you didn't right as far as the challenge right right i mean i think that what what i what i noticed most actually was every time you gave me a change so every time you're like okay we're dropping calories or okay we're increasing our steps or okay we're increasing volume in the gym adapting to that were the hardest anytime you gave me a change. So for like three days, I was like, I fucking can't do this. This is hard. Mm. And then my body would kind of acclimate and mm. I'd be fine. And sense. then you'd give me a change and I would struggle for a couple of days and then I would be okay. And then you'd give me, so it was kind of just like a up and down, up and down graph that didn't, mm-hmm. it, there's, there wasn't a consistent like, okay, we're going down now, we're going down, we're going down. Or a consistent, we're going up, we're going up. It was like, okay, this is hard. Okay, we're leveling out. This is hard a little bit, and we're leveling out. Mm. So Now, Adam talks about on the show a lot about how much he learned about his body during uh, when he competed about, mm-hmm. you know, because he, he, he mentions this all the time. Like, I know when I would add this little thing, my body would change. And when I take this thing out, my body would change. And I knew what was doing what because I was so meticulous about my track and all that stuff. Did you learn stuff about yourself and your body through this process that you that you otherwise wouldn't have learned you think yeah definitely I it's hard to pinpoint because there's so many things that changed um and I think that it's really it's hard yeah it's hard to pinpoint things when everything is changing Mm -hmm. and your body is changing and you're you don't really know what it is but um I think that one of the biggest things for me was realizing that I could do so little cardio and be so lean. That I always mean, blows people's minds. I'd never done that little cardio in my life. I mean, I was the I was the 
you know, the girl who'd get on the Stairmaster every day after she lifted weights and go for 20 minutes of hit every single day. And um, I've never done so little cardio in my life, and I've never been so lean in my Let's life. Let's talk about that. You did cardio when? <laughs> At what point did you guys start throwing actual cardio into your routine? Well, I mean, that's a hard question to answer because we never we never really did throw in actual cardio. He just gave – so Adam would give me – Movement, I called them movement goals. So he was so like your neat, <clears throat> my neat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he would um, tell me, okay, we're trying to get you know thirteen to fifteen thousand steps every day this week, uh, or so, and then it would go up to seventeen to twenty, and then I never really got past twenty thousand, which is a lot. That's of a lot se- of steps. That's like yeah. ten ten miles. So. I get that question actually a lot. People will say, you know, okay, well, I don't really get it because you're preaching that you're not doing cardio and yet you have to (laughs) hit 10 miles a day. That seems that I don't see the difference. And for me, I mean, the difference, even though there might not technically be a difference in terms of what you're burning, for me, it was the, the lifestyle difference was I never allotted a time to get on the treadmill. And and I think that a standard time is two hours for these bikini girls mm-hmm. that compete. And, and that's standard. And I don't know how much it varies up or down, but I hear two hours all the time. That's like the number that I hear. And I never spent, I mean, towards the end or days that I was busy or whatnot, I would get up early and maybe walk on the treadmill for 30 to 40 minutes on but those were days where you know I that was my only option but and that's for, closer to the contest and you're that talking was a about lot like, closer to the contest yeah. yeah like weeks out and a couple weeks out um so when you're doing when you're hitting 15,000 steps or whatever what did it look like for you was it like I did a little walk here I did a little walk there yeah. so I would go on a hike I would walk to the gym instead of drive to the gym I would walk to the grocery store so it was like for me it was a life a, a lifestyle change deciding okay yeah, I'm just gonna be active in my mm-hmm. life versus I'm gonna sit on this treadmill for two hours a day and a lot that time now the cool thing about this is the evidence because uh, they've done studies like this where they've taken you know, people and had them do all of their cardio in one session versus taking the total amount of cardio and splitting it up throughout the day. And when you split it up throughout the day, you actually burn more body fat and you keep more muscle. And it kind of makes sense if you think about it. When you're doing, you know, an hour or an hour and a half of cardio straight, you're really asking your body to become super efficient. You're really asking your body to reduce its muscle mass slow its metabolism down versus doing 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there, 30 minutes there, where it's uh, it's less of an adaptation towards efficiency, which is, you know, another word for slower metabolism. So it makes sense that it would be more effective. It's much easier, too, to scale up and down, too. Mm. It's, it's more realistic to take because you got to remember, too, and I know we say 20,000 steps. But that there was a very gradual progression. And to that's that. like towards yeah. a contest. Right, huh? exactly. That was leading all the way up to almost showtime. So early on, I was only asking ten to twelve thousand steps, and then it was fourteen to sixteen thousand steps, mm-hmm. and then it was sixteen to eighteen thousand steps. And and then really it became a point where and I remember telling her, like, you know, coming up to the last couple of weeks that if you gotta get on the treadmill to get to those steps, that's fine. Our goal is to get it through activity. So the goal is to do do it through movement. But if you need to, because she did, she'd have some of these days that were, you know, working like an, a long eight hour day or gone all day or sitting down somewhere like, OK, well, that then we might have to get on a treadmill at that point just because it's almost impossible not to get, you know, 20, or to get 20,000 steps and not do that. But really, the idea was to, like she said, is to incorporate it into her lifestyle so it doesn't feel like this huge daunting task, which also allows us e- it was easy for us to reverse out. When we come out of it, too, it's just like, okay, well, let's scale back. You don't have to quite do 20,000 steps. Let's get fifteen to 16,000 steps. Let's not quite jump you all the way to 2,600 calories. Let's put you back up to sixteen or 1,800 calories. And so reversing out of it is way easier. And then it helps. It's much easier to maintain their, their weight where she's at. I mean, she went right back. She decided to go right back into another prep. Hmm. And it won't be a hard transition for her at all because she didn't rebound. I think, I don't even know. You didn't only put on a couple pounds after show, right? Yeah, like five 
five-ish. Yeah, three the or average, four. The yeah. average competitor puts on like 20. Oh, yeah. Oh, at yeah. least after yeah. a show. Yeah, I, you, you can guarantee that putting five pounds on, I guarantee you four of it was water. You have know? you mm-hmm. talked to any of your friends that have competed before, like you had mentioned previously, that, that did it, you know, the whole martyr way and yeah. like kind of your whole process? Yeah, what them? do they think about all this? Yeah, I mean, everyone's asking me for Adam's contact information. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> DMs are flooded. This so is why I told her not to put <laughs> me. Hey, people go back and I'm they're just like, a guy behind the guy. Hey, yeah. aren't you helping that girl? I'm like, yeah, but we're not telling anybody that. We're not posting it because as soon as the day after she posted that, thanking me, mm. my DM like crazy. Yeah. Was, yeah, no, we talked about that on the interview I just did right now. He's like, hey, my wife competes and I saw that you helped yeah. out Melissa. And I'm uh, like, no, it's a dude. I just, that was something else, this and that. Yeah, yeah. so. But, you know, I'm glad you did because. Top dollar there, Adam. Because yeah. um, we're, I think sometimes we come across as anti competing a little bit. And it's not that. It's that the way people tend to do it is what I'm what I'm definitely anti and if you, you there is a way to do it that is the right way to do it and I'm glad you you kind of presented this example of uh, how to compete and not come out of it with a damaged metabolism or with a bad relationship mm-hmm. with food and exercise you know because uh, it can really promote that it can oh, really yeah, cause you can those be a big happen. influencer in this this whole process well, so was there anything that we that we did that um that you did ever question or that um yeah what'd you guys debate over I, I, did you was there anything that you you pushed back i know you want i remember when i first had her carb cycle she wanted me to break the science down better and i'm like oh we don't want to go there <laughs> <laughs> we did a little bit though yeah. right right yeah carb well yeah carb cycling was was something that i didn't quite understand i still don't quite understand and i try i, I mean I, I reached out to sal too yeah. i i didn't she's like don't tell adam <laughs> yeah, she's trying to, she try to fact she's trying to fact check me <laughs> this uh, this guy over here's got me carb cycling and who's the skinny uh, guy in the group he sounds he sounds pretty confused Fuse yeah. telling me right now. I just want to make sure you trust him, Sal. <laughs> no, well, it's a it's a it's a gray area, right? We don't have a lot of stuff studied around this, and so some of the things that's this is the this is the area that I found myself in when I was getting ready for a show was what do we know for sure? What is supported by science? What is bro science? And then what is kind of like in the air because we just don't have a lot supporting mm-hmm. it. And there's a lot of uh, bro science surrounding carb cycling but there is a lot of good truths behind it too and at at the end of the day the the body does very it, it adapts and if you give it the same thing all the time uh your body can become desensitized to either hormones types of foods you know cycling macros gives you more variety it's probably going to give you a more diverse uh microbiome it's going to resensitize your body to certain hormones for example i do this with my clients too i have clients that I work with and none of them compete, but I all, I have almost every single one of them, you know, cycle their macros. And it's because I know when you go very low carbohydrate, you're going to promote more insulin sensitivity so that when you do eat carbohydrates, they're utilized uh, a a, a better way. And the anecdote, uh, and again, there's no science really to support this yet, but the anecdote's pretty strong. Right. And so that was kind of like how I, when I was explaining to her, I'm like, eh, because she wanted to write about it. She's like, you don't want to write about this. Could you explain the science better to me? I'm like, ooh, that's going to be a tough one because you're going to get this type, you're going to hear this, and it's going to sound very bro mm-hmm. and they're going to hear this, and it's going to sound very incomplete. <laughs> and so that's like carb cycling in a nutshell for me. But, you know, I believe that, I mean, you can ask her too. Like, uh, I, I can't remember off the top of my head how many different uh, macro profiles we did too. I mean, how many times did we shoot fat and lower lower carbs, higher carbs? Like, all, all the time. Yeah, we incorporated fasting. So she, through her prep, we 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 manipulated macro profiles. So those that are wondering right now, oh, what was her macro ratio? Did she run a 30, 30, 40, or what did she run? Like all of them. All of them. Yeah, we literally we literally messed with them all the time. And just like she said, I would give her these little goals every week or so. Now that- what did you notice anything, any changes when you would do that? Like if like when Adam said, okay, you know, for the next two days, you're going to eat lower carb, higher fat, or for the next two days, you're going to fast. Or mm-hmm. did you notice differences in the way you looked and performance that you can connect to those? Or did you, are you mm-hmm. there yet? Or do you need to do it more before you can start to see? No, I mean, I definitely did. I mean, on the, on the higher carb days, I felt like I could move way more in the gym and I, I love carbs. So I was always so excited for high carb days and I know it's not, that's not your shit, Sal, but... Well, <laughs> I, what are we talking about? Everybody well, loves love carbs. carbs. <laughs> yeah, they're good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I felt way better when I was eating more carbs. And then, I mean, but that's the thing. The carb cycling, 
so I saw a lot with carb cycling and I don't necessarily think it's because so as soon as I started looking at it as fluctuations in calories by way of carbohydrates that made more sense to me mm. I couldn't look at it as carb cycling because that's just really convoluted mm -hmm. and I feel like there's just way too much that goes into that for me to see like a straight line it was like okay we're trying to give you lower calorie days and higher calorie days so that you can still get in good training sessions but we're dropping in on days so that we can promote that fat loss and we're just going to take out take that out from carbs. Mm -hmm. So I think that and that's a probably a good thing to expand on because it is something I know that I do different than almost any other coach that I've ever seen coach because the standard is they carb cycle, but then they replace the fat. They replace the carbohydrates sure. with fat, and so, so the, calories are the same. So the calories stay the same. And we weren't doing that. It mm -hmm. was it was low it, calorie, low carb. Yeah, it was a lower calorie, yeah. a medium calorie day, and then what a a, a little like ten percent over what a normal day would be. So we mm -hmm. had established where you know her medium was. Well, you guys were undulating calories. Exactly. Yeah. So we were undulating calories through carbohydrates, mm -hmm. and that's kind of how I told her to approach it. I'm like, approach it like that. We're not messing with carbs and keeping the calories the same we're lowering carbs and lowering carbs again and we're reducing calories and then i'm refeeding you and i'm giving you actually more than keeping you low and losing mm -hmm. we're kind of refeeding a little bit and the, the idea and theory behind that is that i'm going to spike leptin back up mm -hmm. we go low 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 knowing that's going to slow her down a bit and i don't want there's get also the there's also because I, I do this with my clients too is uh when uh, on their high fat days I, their calories are usually lower. And the reason is because fat is satiating. It's mm -hmm. very satiating. So it makes sense to have somebody, if you're going to have them eat more calories on a particular day, to make it a higher carb day. Because if I say, we're going to have you eat you know, 1,700 calories, low carb, so you're going to eat all this fat, uh, you, usually by halfway through the day, I'm getting a text that's I like, think, uh, I can't eat anymore. I feel so full. I think that was actually, I'm pretty sure, I know I use this strategy a lot with uh, competitors. I'm pretty sure I did this with Melissa where... Um, we, you know, days that we'd incorporate fasting, then I would, the first meal she ate, I would say high fat, you know, go after a lot of fat for your first meal. So that's a strategy that we incorporate inside there too. And, uh, yeah, there was so much, uh, different stuff. There was no set like macro profile or, I mean, every week we were tweaking something and that to, to me is again, and we say this on the show all the time, right? Which, Oh, you have to bring this up, Melissa. I was just going to say what I know you got into with your, your, uh, at school, which was, I'm, I always say that, you know, we're always trying to do as little as possible to elicit the most amount of change. Mm. So make the, and you brought this up <laughs> mm -hmm. at, in class. Which go, class was it? In my, uh, exercise prescription mm. class. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's your teacher's name? What was the conflict? What was the problem? Yeah. There wasn't a it wasn't a problem. She was she, she gave us this graph. They were so okay. So it's an exercise prescription class. So they're trying to teach us. I'm going to school for physical therapy, and they're trying to teach us how to prescribe exercises to our patients or clients. And um, they gave us this with this graph with a bunch of thresholds on it, and. I just didn't understand the graph and I was asking her, I was like, I really don't get why there are so many thresholds on this graph. <laughs> Can you explain it to me? And she was trying to, so she explained it. I don't really, I don't remember her explanation, but what came up in my mind was minimal amount of effort for, to elicit the, the greatest outcome, which is what Adam would always say to me is what the goal is. And, um, so I thought of that and I, and I, and I, brought it up and I said, oh, my, my coach always says, you know, minimal effort for greatest outcome. Heaven it, forbid you refer a coach in a fucking <laughs> academia world. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, they're, they're all super, um, for the most part, open-minded people. And I mean, there was, they, there was, so there are two uh, instructors for this class and one of them was like, oh, yeah, that's exactly it. Nailed it. Right on the head. Done. And um, the other one kind of gave me a little bit of a, I don't know about what you're saying there, because in the context of physical therapy, minimal effort is rarely minimal effort seeming to be minimal effort. I could see where you can argue that with physical therapy because with you, frequency and consistency and pa patterning good habits is there, becomes there, Trump's actually eliciting change. They're thinking, okay, they're thinking minimal effort as in easy. Right. What Adam is saying, 
I'll translate, very simple. So you do the least amount of work for the most amount of change literally means the perfect amount of work. That's all it means. Right. That's right all dose. it means is you're right. doing the right dose. And that's what I told them. Yeah. But it's just, it. it's sticky jargon or wording or rhetoric when you're in the physical therapy realm where oftentimes the smallest amount of work is so taxing and it's ab- like somebody can't even sit up straight Mm -hmm. and that and even maybe sitting up going all the way into a full sit is just too much work so to think about minimal effort just that just Mm. just phrasing something in that way where you're making it seem easy by saying minimal effort it's just the association yeah the capacity further right so they're always trying to kind of increase range of motion or increase the the, the the work that's available. I just there, don't right? think they don't like the word. Yeah, yeah I think yeah, I think because exactly it, yeah. it started. Like the I think it started. I think it's because it started. My coach told me. My coach, yeah, <laughs> that's why I yeah. fucking think it's. Because it apl- I don't think it matters it, how great it, it was. It applies to the same example you just gave. Right. Person can't sit up, yeah. then we do less. Right. Yeah. We do less to to get your change. It's just it's just perfect. It's the perfect prescription. It's mm-hmm. all it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I think I agree with Adam. I think <laughs> I starting any sentence with my coach says. My bodybuilding coach says. I know. Right. <laughs> Instant discredit. Yeah. <laughs> right there. Yeah. We uh, don't believe anything he's saying. Oh, bro science. So I did it that. did it cause was Fat it just burners. you yeah. and the two teachers or no, did no, it? No, it was the whole class. Everyone was chiming in. Everyone was trying to give examples that were missing the mark. I mean, we're all noobs. It's like we're all figuring it out. It was there wasn't like a super great intellectual debate that I have a whole lot to report on. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> it was basically uh, name was calling for all that. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, it, w- w- what was the consensus? Did we did we win? Did we win or we lose? I know we won. Okay, oh, good. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. all. Yeah. That we were we were just wondering if we had to go up there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. you ever need backup? You just you let us. We'll be your entourage. Yeah. Yeah. We'll show up. No, no, no. We won. <laughs> Who wants to <a> debate? <laughs> <laughs> what was the uh, what was the hardest part of of the whole process? From everything from the Having dieting, the training, you. to even getting up on stage and presenting your physique. What's what was the hardest thing? The hardest thing was <clears throat> just feeling really isolated, I think. Um, feeling like, because I mean, I <laughs> I like to socialize and go out with my friends. I like to have a drink. I like to, you know, do things that normal people do. And I just felt like I couldn't enjoy those things that I used to really enjoy because, Mm. I mean, they were more chores. And whenever a friend would say, oh, let's hang out on on Wednesday, I'd be like, okay, on Wednesday I have to hang out with this person. And I really don't want to, but I know I have to because it's a relationship that I want to fuel and I need to make sure. Like making sure that I was keeping the connections that I had with my friends was a chore. I didn't enjoy it. It wasn't mm. it wasn't fun for me. Mm. Um, unless, you know, they were like, let's go for a hike. I'd be like, oh, yeah, let's do that for sure. <laughs> yeah, but if yeah. it was like, let's go for a drink, I was like, OK, I'll go with you and sit there and just wait for it to be over. Yeah. I think that's the hardest part of competing is that piece right there is that people don't realize just the sacrifice that it takes to to take your physique to that level at, and to time it at a certain time becomes very selfish. You know, like if it was a lifelong goal to get fitter and better like oh okay well you can still exactly. incorporate getting drinks and doing these social events and you know those are just minor setbacks to the overall journey but when you have a goal in mind and i think this is what i always try to explain to even people that don't want to compete but they have these goals that they feel so passionate about like i want to lose 30 pounds like it's so and i want to lose it by my birthday you know and it's like yeah. and it's doable like it really is like i can mathematically break that down for somebody and say yeah yeah you could get there but you know that that's got to become like your priority. You know, you can't be like, oh, hey, well, Wednesday I hung out mm-hmm. with my girlfriend and we had some drinks, you know, like. Did you have any nutritional hacks or anything? Like, did you like have, uh, uh, I don't know, mineral water or something when they're drinking? Like, what did you do like when you're hanging out? Um, yeah, I drank a lot of sparkling water. And I also drank a lot of BCAs. And I know that there's no... There's, was your coach telling you to do that? Yeah, no, yeah. No, it's all about them BCAs. Because I, I feel like Adam would tell you know. not to. Yeah, he always told me. He always was that, that was that was a good... That was something that I actually really liked about the way that Adam would coach me is he'd give me a lot of freedom to do what I felt like was the right thing to do. Mm. So 
I you have to learn mistakes on your own. <laughs> no, tell 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 them how I pre- okay, okay. tell them how I presented no. BCAs to so, you or how you brought it up to me and then how I handled it so they people understand. Okay. Well, I mean, I when I told Adam that I drank BCAs, he was like, "You don't need to do that. Don't do that." And I knew that already. I don't drink BCAs because I think I need them. I don't drink BCAs for any reason other than it's like a a, a diet soda for me. It makes drinking water fun and it's pretty. And that's it. <laughs> that's colorful. And, and I was okay with this answer. I said, okay, oh. if it if it helps you not drink alcohol and not drink other poisonous <laughs> shit for us, and it's your one vice right here. I said it can stay in the diet until we get towards the end. Now I will say this about branched amino acids: the overconsumption of them will or can at least interfere with the production of certain neuro uh, neurotransmitters, and has been connected with uh, low levels of depression. So be careful with drinking all those branching acids. So, it's true. Yeah, but you'd, you'd have to drink. You were, you were doing all of that. You'd have to drink. You'd have to take a lot of them. But you know, if you're drinking it all day. You know, Sal yeah. also got on me for microwaving my plastic. Oh so, yeah, that's right. oh, I'm just uh, fucking up my left and right. God, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, other than that, I, I mean, I really liked any way that I could figure out how to increase the volume of my food was like, <laughs> I'm there. Like, I mm. want to look, I want my plate to look full, as full as it can. So I ate so many vegetables. I was like a veggie monster. Mm. Um, and that's why I also, and that's part of the thing with, with carbs and fats for me is just the mental game of like, fats are so little mm-hmm. and carbs are so much. And right now I just want to at least feel like I'm eating a lot. And it's crazy because I was never eating a little, but it felt like a little. As I was pushing my... um my neat and moving more and more and more I was like and not changing the way that I was you're not bumping up my calories at all it would I would really just like to I just always diverted towards okay how can I make all my food look like it's more than it actually and there's is. A, there's a psychological component too where <laughs> you know 1600 calories for a 115 pound girl is not bad at all Mm-mm. but there's a psychological component of knowing you can't eat more You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, this is my target. I can't eat more. Now you feel restricted, and now it feels like it's a little bit. Right. Because I have clients that I work with who are heavier than you that I have them track, and they don't – I'm not telling them to eat anything yet because I'm just observing them. And they're averaging, like, 1,200 calories a day just because they don't have that big of an appetite. But you better believe if I tell them that's all you can eat, Mm -hmm. then that psychological component starts to set in, and you know that, oh, I can't eat more than this. This is all I'm allotted today. It feels restrictive. And so there's, that's, the, that's probably, I would assume, has got to be the most difficult part of all this coaching is the psychological piece. Right. And that's another hack that I used for, for that was, was fasting because, I mean, Adam never even really instructed me to fast, but I, would, I just chose to fast almost every day until uh, like noon or one so that then I felt like I had all this food to eat for mm. the rest of the day. Um, it just made it it just made it so much easier if i could get through that first part of the day and now i like it now i choose to eat that way and mm-hmm. i choose not mm-hmm. to eat my food until later because i don't feel like i i got used to it yeah excellent now you're going to compete again and now i am going to compete again are you, you got the bug huh? are, are you are you coaching her still adam or are you doing it on your own now most of everything she's done on her own so far like i haven't really i mean uh, we talked yesterday about kind of the overall plan but plan. yeah she's pretty much are you have you changed the, the focus sessions at all i know you said hamstrings and delts are you changing anything is it still those no i i think that's the same yeah. same same focus to keep developing still doing that. the maps aesthetic style yeah because she's only when you yeah. think about it we're and and this is what we talked about right because she asked me um hey do you think i should do a show right 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 again or should i wait for because she's she's uh qualified for nationals so she could technically go to the big Miami show, go to the big Pittsburgh show or go to the big USA show and go after her pro card. And I said, well, there's a couple things that we can do. Um, one, you can do another show and just treat it as practice. Like we don't really give a shit what your placing is. Get up there. I mean, obviously you're going to get there and try and win, but I mean, we're going up there to just get reps in because we know we need to get better at our stage presence. You're mm-hmm. not going to become a pro until you get at least comfortable and you get your at least your solid poses down. And she's at that point right now, right? She's got in the got in incredible shape. I think we smoked everybody on the stage. It wasn't even close. I think the only thing that we can sharpen uh, is we could have came in a little bit leaner if we're talking about the professional level. And if and she could have 
Uh, I think we're not presenting her. I think her physique is much better than how we presented it on stage. And this is, and I, I told her I was very transparent from the beginning too. Like I am the worst to help you in this. Like I'm like the worst posing pro. So, you know, here I am trying to help her and coach her on getting a, be a better poser. So I'm like, nothing is going to get you better than just fucking reps. So getting mm-hmm. in there and getting in there. So this next show, uh, doesn't really do anything for her as Have far as you guys as- seen Adam's bikini routine. <laughs> it's yeah, really it's, good. It's fantastic. <laughs> when he drinks a lot, he does it for us. Yeah, yeah. Can I, you fit in your I'm heels? a bad I'm a bad men's physique poser. I am a horrific bikini poser. <laughs> he looks like a noodle. Like uh, a walking noodle. I can't even do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Video so yeah, I'm over and so imagine that, right? Imagine me trying to teach her who so we were lucky we actually had um oh my god, I drew a blank on her name. Ramonta. Ramonta. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dave. Uh, it, yeah, boyfriend. Dave. Yeah, mm-hmm. his girl, one of his clients. And, and she's an excellent poser. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she came down and she she spent some time. Her and Melissa got together quite a few times. But yeah, this next show. We filmed that. It's on YouTube. Didn't mm-hmm. we film the whole thing? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's on YouTube. This uh, this show really, like I, like I said, it's not um, her placing first place. And this show right here isn't going to do anything other than really just give her reps and then probably feel good to take the whole show if she can, you know? So that really is what this, this show is about. How many weeks out is that? It's only, it's only three and a half weeks from now. So how do you, how are you structuring your training now? Do you, do you go phase one, phase two, or do you go straight to phase three through the training with aesthetic type? So I've been bumping up my calories again. I'm, Mm. I just, I was eating, well, I got up to 2,100 calories and, um, now I am cutting down again. So this is day two of being lower, um, back to back to like sixteen to eighteen, depending on mm-hmm. how much I move that day. But this one, this time around, is going to be a lot different. Um, it well, it's for one, it's shorter, and for two, I'm in school and f- and I'm sitting <laughs> for like ten hours a day at least. So. That's really hard, and it's already proven to be super, super tough because I go to class at 8 a.m. I have class until noon. I have one hour break in between for lunch. I don't take lunch. I run to the gym. I lift as much as I can, and I go back to class, and then I'm in class until 5. I go home. I study for another couple hours, and in between my studying, I take a break, and I go to the gym in my apartment complex and I lift more and then I go to bed. So my day my day for the past couple of weeks has been, because I'm trying to increase volume, which is, I mean, that's coach's orders. So I'm lifting more and um, now I'm starting to move more. So that's going to call for me to get on the treadmill probably at like 5 a.m. in the morning. Really, Really at this point, when you think about somebody who is, running back another show that's only three or four weeks out from the last show, realistically, we're not going to make any real gains because we're our, we're putting her back in a caloric deficit. Mm-hmm. So there was only a short period where we ramped the calories back up. Mm-hmm. So the, the gain train ain't here right now. Like we're in a deficit. We're catabolic. So the likelihood of her building right now isn't going to happen. So it's just preserve. Yeah. Preserve it, and lean. Exactly. Preserve and lean. Get up on stage. Present the best lean physique we can in that short period of time by doing it correctly and healthy and get up there and get reps in for... Now, of course, her competitive ass I know wants to win, but <laughs> my attitude and co- coaching-wise is like, listen, it's not about that. You decided to pick a show that's four weeks right after your other one, and if we wanted to really go and build your physique and re-sculpt it and sharpen it more, it, we would give ourselves some more time, right? We would go through a bulking phase and you know, put some more muscle on her then come peel back down again. But to run back another show... I, and this is, a, I think this is, a, it's a great point because I see this a lot with b- bikini. The, a lot of these girls, they get trapped in this show after show after show mm-hmm. and they don't have a pro physique yet. Like Melissa is a little bit different. Like I knew it when I met her that she already had the structure. She'd already, she put the real work in. Like I don't get the credit for that. Like she, she built that over years and years and years of training and I can see somebody and go, Okay, if I peeled her down to three, four percent body fat, she's got what it takes to to win. She has the look for sure. 
But I see a lot of bikini girls that get into competitions because they just want to or their girlfriend does it. And they really haven't been training correctly for very long or no one's really built a really good program or they don't ha- they're not genetically gifted and so they don't have the aesthetics. And then they just get in this bikini show after bikini show mm-hmm. and they're catabolic, catabolic, catabolic. And it's like, how are you going to progress your physique if you're always catabolic and doing show after show after show? And the only reason why I would even let her do something like that and be totally not against it is that she already has that physique. I think she already has the pro physique. I think she just needs to get reps under, you know, practicing, getting comfortable on stage. And like I said, we could to win, to win, I think the overall or to go pro, I think our conditioning could have been one week tighter. That's it, maybe. And I think even that, even then, I think she could technically win it where she what she brought. I thought for sure we had the the formula to go pro. So well, awesome. Good luck. Yeah. In the next competition, where can people find you on social media? Uh, and in, on Instagram at Melly Wolf M E L I W O L F F. You had to think about that. Yeah, I, did. I was like, I'm going to spell my <laughs> whole name, my name right now. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. And uh, uh, the video of you posing, you can find it on our YouTube channel. Mind Pump TV. Subscribe to it. We post a new video every single day. Also, 30 Days of Coaching. It's available for free at mindpumpmedia.com. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.